And now, Funko presents Inside the Artist's Studio. All right, welcome to a special edition of Inside the Artist Studio. We're coming live, we're coming to you live from San Diego. Pretty much. Yeah, in Funkoville. This amazing setup here. And uh, unfortunately, Sean is not with us for this episode, but we have an amazing guest here, uh, Mike Becker. And um, it's perfect because we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the history of, of being at these cons and, and really interacting with the fans and, and what that history has been like. So I know we always on the show, we have a word of the day or something, and I think family seems appropriate um, when I think about just some of my first Comic Cons, which really weren't that long ago. But I wonder, Mike, if you could just talk about kind of how this started. What was the impetus for having these events to interact with the fans? And, and you know, how'd that all start? Well, I always thought and I'd always heard that the Super Bowl or whatever for fans or was, was this thing called Comic Con. And so I think I was about 2001, we did our first one. We were able to get a 10 by 10 booth and and so I got, I think it was Rob and Sean, I go, what can we do, you know, what could we possibly design that, uh, that would look good at, at Comic-Con? And what we came up with was the most spectacular IKEA booth you've ever seen. And it was pretty humble beginnings, and um, I think we did Emerald City as well when it first started. Wow. And it, those were really humble beginnings. And then we went to the New York Toy Fair. That was really early on, and we had an idea to take all of our printed boxes with the Funko logo and make them into this giant kind of almost pyramid and put the product inside of it. Man, we thought we were really clever. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of how it started by just kind of like realizing that uh, we wanted to do, we wanted to be there, but then starting to think, how do we keep plussing and plussing, you know? Yeah. So, so much about when you're at these cons or toy fairs and stuff, it's, it's, it's about these exchanges of business and things like that. Funko's so much more different, right? There's an experience, there's an interaction, like it's, it's becoming almost one with the fans. That had to be by design, right? The way you guys thought about it, like when you started doing those, it wasn't just, hey, we want to sell some product, was it? No, for me, it's always been about uh, the Funko feeling in terms of family and fun and how all those things integrate together. And so I always kind of actually just did what I wanted to do. I always thought like, what would be, what, what, what would I think is fun, you know? And so I remember the, the real turning point was when we came here and we decided to make like a mini grocery mart, like almost like a mini mart. And we called it, I don't even know if we, if we had a specific name, but we all wore aprons and hats. You know, yeah, I've seen I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, we had like uh, little JPEG uh, of our spastic plastic toys, and we had little baskets and all of that. It was pretty neat. That's cool. So that that really got into the theming, right? And we're sitting here in Funkoville, which is massive. It's a city. Yeah. It's an entire city. We have different uh, retail opportunities with Mondo and Loungefly. Like, can you talk about just from that kind of grocery store idea? How do we get to this point? Like, how, how is it, we have such an amazing setup for this? That was a, a tall order. I just got with some of the artists. I got with Schwartz early on. In fact, you know what's funny? We were doing WonderCon and we were starting to work with this aluminum construction uh, system. And we just started sketching out on a piece of paper. He did, not me. <laughs> right. And, uh, right. yeah. And, um, like, what would it like? I, I, I said, could we could actually build like a mini city, couldn't we? And John Wallace says, yeah, we could. And so we started sketching out because I was going to Disney a lot. I was going to in downtown Disney and Main Street Disney, especially Main Street. And I loved all the storefronts and I thought, let's just make like a little small town USA. And so it just started with the sketches like you know how it always works. And then you go from there and you tighten them up, you tighten them up. And it probably changed. Uh, it probably changed a, a hundred times. No. You know, at one point I think we had a bowling alley and we had this and that. I don't know. but it, But... We went through a hundred iterations of it and we ended up here where we, it was a, another easy way to include our new partners, you know, with Mondo yeah. and Loungefly. Yeah. Talk about the fan experience, right? And in, in all of this and, you know, obviously it's exciting and you want to do things you want to do. We all make this stuff because we love it and be a part of it. Talk to me about how important that fan experience is and just even in fans working in the booth. Like I, you know, I met some of the most amazing people who have been fanatics for so long and they come and work the booth, like they volunteer. Like, 
how does that whole all that you know happen? Yeah, I, I think it goes back to the, the, the whole feeling thing and the, the part of the, the family feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, it again, it, I, I guess I always thought that, you know, you do what you love and you'll find other people that are like you. It's like starting with Big Boy with the whole bobblehead thing and the wacky wobbler is like, I thought, you know, there's got to be a thousand other weirdos out there like me. And it turned out, you know, there were several thousand, but... But again, with the booth and the experience, it was like, like, what would I want to see? What would I want to experience? I don't want to just go up and stand in line for an hour and then just buy something I could buy online. Or I don't want to just buy something off a shelf and, uh, and then just go on my way. I want, I want to feel the experience. I want to feel the love. And so if you, if you see a lot of uh, the people that are working for it, they're all in outfits. Like we have the, the grocery store clerks, we have the cafe workers, we even have ushers out front in front of the theater. We have a mayor down there. So it's totally, everybody's playing a part. We have a, we have a newspaper uh, that's like the, the Funko Gazette that even has our menu in it. So you, even the bags that you get your product in look like giant grocery store shopping bags. So the idea was, is like, let's just do this right from the buttons to the stickers to the poster that looks like a giant, you know, wish you were here postcard. I don't know, I just, I just love to completely immerse uh, the fans in that interactive fun and it seems to be working. Yeah, no, it definitely works. I, when you come into this, you f this feels like Funko. You know, when people always ask like, what does it feel like to work there? Just walk into our booth at any point, right? At any of these events, it feels like how our work, work world is, right? Like the way we interact, the way we get, we get so excited about stuff and it's all those details, right? We put all that in everything we do. So it, it's really, it's really cool. I don't think, for this particular con, you know, this is, it's been almost three full years, right? And we, we're back here. I don't think this moment's gonna get lost on anybody. I, I felt like when they announced like, welcome to Comic-Con 2022, I could almost feel people, they were cheering, but in a different way. Like I could almost feel the emotion in the cheers. And so even better that we were able to, to come back and do something like this to make people feel like, hey, we're home. We're home, you know? And like, what better than bring someone home than, you know, small town yeah. USA. and and welcome home, come back to your Funko family. And I mean, it, to me, I almost had like a little lump in my throat. It was kind of cool. No, it's perfect. I mean, it really does set this whole whole event up. So so let's talk a little bit about the artists, Mike, because there's so many amazing, talented people behind putting something like this together from the initial idea that you were talking about, you and Rob sketching, like how, what, how much work goes into this? And, and you know, how does this all happen? And Well, the good thing about this particular booth was that we did it all around Funko, Funko IP, Funko yeah. uh, logos and things. And so I started this time with Rob because I felt really comfortable with him and especially with that kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it, like almost mid-century yep. kind of vibe or 1950s, 1960s kind of vibe. Yep. So we just started, you know, like like with sketches, then we start with, with basic color renders um, and it goes all the way down to um, when we really, really have to get into it was when we get the specs for the booth and then have to design back into those specs. And, and as you probably know, uh, there's so many things that change. You know, you, when you start having to build something in scale yeah. and it goes from these wild things to, wait a minute, that door would only be two feet you know, wide and that, yeah, but right. it would be eight feet tall. That, you know, when you start trying to put it into scale and, and how it would really look and then trying to figure out what that scale would look like, um, I don't know. That's where all the all the all the real fun comes. No, for play. sure. And I know, like this time around, there was some dimensional kind of renderings and stuff that uh, I got to see early on when you guys first put this vision together. That's kind of a little bit new for for the, these events, right? Like this is something that we I hadn't seen that on some of the other cons earlier. Like, it, can you talk a little bit about how those come to be? Because those really made it come to life, you know, in, a, in an interesting way from a two D drawing. Yeah, that was so. That was Karen uh, it, over at Funko South Office. She was able to take basically the the scale drawings, and she has a she has a heavy architectural background, and she's really able to 3D render these in such a way where you literally can walk down now Funkoville. You can go into Mondo. You can go into Loungefly. You could almost shop, and so that was a new thing for us. Yeah. And, and we're starting to use that more and more to give people a better idea. So I mean. To be honest, I don't know how she does it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to run Magic. those programs, but I uh, I try to get it to a point with 
with the other artists that we can hand it off and then she works her magic and makes us all look great. Yeah, no, it makes a big difference in, in helping us all see it, so. One of the other things, Mike, I know back at Emerald City, we, um, we brought artists in and I know that was kind of a first con back. You're talking about that kind of lump in the throat feeling yeah. and, and I know, you know, being a local show, we got to really bring some artists in and draw for the fans and I know that meant a lot for, for our, you know, artists to get out there and meet the fans and the fans actually enjoyed it. Can you talk about, and we've done it at Star Wars Celebration in different places, what, you know, what, how does that work with the fans and, and what is the importance of having that interaction from both sides? Yeah, I've, I've always felt that, that was, those were key moments I felt too because when the fan can meet the artist, you know, a lot of times with the Funko product, I, I, I really sometimes think products secondary to the Funko feeling and why people just feel it. They could buy a Spider-Man pop, but there's a certain amount of love and care that the artist took into that design, and they're usually fans themselves. Yep. And so when people buy that product, they don't even know why they like it so much. I think they realize, or maybe not, maybe it's subconscious, there's a lot of love and care that went into the packaging, into the product, a lot of attention. and so. For the fans to come and meet the artists at Emerald City, and then we plussed it up big time when we went to Star Wars Celebration, it's, it's a real thrill for the fans to have a custom uh, drawing or just to be able to watch you guys in action, uh, do what you do every day. It, it was a real treat. I, I see, I think we should do more of that. Absolutely, no, and the, and the great thing about Star Wars is we had video cameras, you know, viewing the drawing and we had screens where people could see and I know you know, usually on the show we'll show some art that inspires us and stuff and I know I think this week we're going to get a chance to look at some of that uh, drawings that were done at Star Wars Celebration so it'd be really exciting. So now we're going to take a look at some of the footage that was taken at Star Wars Celebration that we were just talking about of the artist actually drawing some of this art that brings these things to life so let's take a look. exactly what I was saying I mean you can see there how excited some of the fans were getting to see that custom art being done and and where it all comes from yeah man we never get tired of seeing the drawings happen as much as you know I get to do those drawings too but it's still fun so um, this has been great and uh, man I really appreciate you being on the show Mike and uh, it's been an awesome episode here in San Diego so I think that wraps it up all right thank you for all having right. me. yeah all right we'll see you guys <laughs>